Oral questions, Lenahad The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Just quatre. Just 80 days after becoming Prime Minister, Stephen Harper promised to put an end to or managed to put an end to tariffs on softwood lumber. But this Prime Minister caved in and allowed Donald Trump to reimpose those tariffs, and uh, Mr. Biden doubled them. Stephen Harper entered into a deal with Barack Obama, uh, Obama in order to avoid the consequences of the Buy America Act. Can we have an election so the Canadians could have a prime minister who will stand up for Canadians? The right honourable prime minister. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, what we see once again is the conservative leader saying anything and everything. While we stand up, against Donald Trump. We stood up against him when he wanted to renegotiate NAFTA, and it was the Conservatives, including Stephen Carper, who were encouraging us to back down and not offend the Americans. On the contrary, we stood up for ourselves. We protected supply management. We protected steel and aluminum workers. We protected Canadian jobs all across this country, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, this Liberal Prime Minister not only capitulated to Obama, Trump and Biden, he also gave a half billion dollars worth of investment that left this country impoverishing Canadians in the process. Ten years ago, the New York Times said life in Canada has the Canada has the wealthiest middle class in the world, and it's, Canada seems to be outstripping even the U.S. Today, it's the opposite. Canadians are poorer than Americans. Why is this prime minister creating jobs for Americans? The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, the opposition leader continues to claim that Canada's broken, but at the same time, he wants to get rid of the investments that will help Canadians, for example, with the construction of new homes. The millions of dollars that we have sent to the government of Quebec to build new affordable housing, he, if it was up to him, he would cut and impose austerity on Quebecers and all Canadians. We don't, they don't want that. We don't want that. We need to invest to help alleviate the housing crisis and that not the kind of policies the opposition leader is proposing. Minister Stephen Harper, only 80 days to get a softwood lumber deal that put an end to the tariffs and we reimbursed that, the, what we're already collected. And then this Liberal Prime Minister capitulated, allowed Trump to reimpose the tariffs and Biden to double them. Harper got us an exemption to buy America. This Prime Minister then capitulated allowed Trump and Biden to reimpose them, hurting our construction workers and our providers of steel. Why can't we have a carbon tax election so that we can have a prime minister that no longer capitulates to the Americans, but instead will stand up for Canada? Yeah. The right honourable prime minister. Mr. Speaker, since I just answered that question in French, allow me instead to take a moment to condemn unequivocally the violence we've seen in South Asian communities across the country over the past few nights. Let me be very, very clear. The individuals who are inciting violence and division and hatred in no way represent either the Sikh community or the Hindu community in Canada. At a time of Diwali and Bandi Chordivas, we're seeing communities come together to celebrate uh, their diversity and their strength. We will continue to stand for the unity of Canadians. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The New York Times 10 years ago, life in Canada, home of the world's most affluent middle class. Median income in Canada appears to have surpassed median income in the United States. Yeah. Oh, what a decade can do. Now, American workers make almost $20,000 more than their Canadian counterparts. They get twice as much investment every single year. 
the gap between our per capita GDP and that of the United States is now the worst in a century wow. after this Prime Minister's rising taxes, bureaucracy and blocking of energy projects. I know why Harris and Trump want to create jobs for Americans, but why does this Prime Minister want to help them? Here, here. Right. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The silence of the Conservative leader is deafening when it comes to what's happening in the South Asian communities right now. And it's a real shame. Not only is he not stepping forward to talk uh, about how all Canadians must stand together and all South Asian Canadians, Sikh, uh, Hindu, uh, Jain, Buddhist, are, are celebrating together this weekend. But he even refuses to take the issue seriously enough to get the security clearance necessary to be briefed on threats to Canada and to Canadians. That's not leadership, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Now you know, now you know his real agenda. He wants to distract from all the economic misery he's called at home. And so he uses divisions here at home. These divisions are the result of him. Under his leadership, we've seen a 251 percent increase in hate crimes, firebombings of synagogues, bullets shot at Jewish children's schools, a hundred churches burned and vandalized. And now we see sectarian riots on the street streets of Brampton. This never happened before this Prime Minister. Does he take ownership for the divisions he's caused and the violence that has resulted? Yeah. Yeah. Order. Colleagues. When asked members, please, uh, especially members from the far end of the House, to please not take the, the not take the floor unless they are recognised by the Speaker. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, people watching that last answer will know uh, and note uh, the assuredness with which the Leader of the Opposition declared all the causes and the sources of uh, the terrible violence we're seeing. When the refuses to take the necessary briefings that our security agencies are offering him to understand the threats to Canada. Why won't he get the security clearance necessary to protect Canadians? Order. Colleagues, it does not do well uh, when on one side of the House is asked to keep quiet, the other side of the House should do the same. All members should do the same. Well, thanks uh, very much. I, uh, I am uh, delighted that, uh, as, the, uh, as the Parliamentary Secretary uh, pointed out, that my remarks have drawn the attention of the Minister and, uh, and look forward to, uh, to his um, having the opportunity to, uh, to hear a little bit about the effect of their record on Canadians, his record on Canadians. Look, the after nine years of this NDP Liberal government, they, they, claim, they claim time and time again that uh, they're looking out for people. But I'll tell you who they're looking out for. It's always Liberal insiders. It's never about uh, what they, what they you know, put up in the window. There's always a sleight of hand with, with these Liberals. And, of course, with the context of what's been happening in Parliament that's been paralyzed by Liberal corruption for more than a month, the $400 million scandal at their Green Slush Fund is, uh, is a testament to 
what these Liberals prioritize. It's not about the environment. It's not, it's not what that environment minister says uh, it's about. It's about helping their well-connected insiders. What did they do? They appointed one of their friends to chair the board. And what did she do? Well, she did what Liberals do. And she, she stuck her hand in taxpayers' pockets and she took out their wallets, cleaned them out, and put it back in rows. It, for the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, Kevin Kelsey. Uh, is, uh, Mr. Speaker, is he talking about the lady that donated thousands of dollars to the Conservative Party? Yes. At a point of order, the Honourable Me Member for Leeds Grenville, Thousand Island Green Relays. The, the truth hurts for these Liberals that are so corrupt, so corrupt, that that Prime Minister, the Prime Minister that, that you know, he, he might support, well, he might be one of the dozens of Liberal MPs who don't support their own Prime Minister, but that Prime Minister, he broke the law. He broke the law twice, twice, and multiple ministers over here also broke the law. And that's why, that's why when, when they appointed their friend to the Green Slush Fund, when they appointed their friends to the Green Slush Fund board, what did they do? Well, they also got caught breaking the law putting themselves before Canadians, robbing them blind. Well, Canadians line up at food banks in record numbers. We've seen their record after nine years. Costs are up to such a point where food bank use has never seen the likes of what it has after nine years of these economic vandals. Millions, millions of Canadians using food banks in a single month that's their legacy. Doubling food bank usage in, in all sorts of, of communities right across this country, including in that member's riding. His legacy is doubling food bank use in Winnipeg. Shameful. It's shameful. Very shameful. And, and, and what do Canadians get? We have a third, we have a third of those food bank users who are children. For the first time in my lifetime, we've got 25% of Canadians who don't know how they're going to feed their families. Now, unemployment isn't at 25%. Double, digit, double digits higher of Canadians who are suffering from food insecurity after nine years of their economic vandalism, the NDP Liberals. How is it that we have that in this country? One in four Canadians. Well, I'll tell you who isn't lined up at food banks. It's these well-connected liberal insiders. Like in, their, like in their $60 million arrive scheme, paying tens of millions of dollars to a company that did no actual work, no IT work on, on an app that should have cost many orders of magnitude less. But what did they do? They put those liberal insiders first. And what did Canadians get in return? Were they safer? Nope. But their rent doubled. Their mortgages doubled. Yeah. Used to be able to pay off a mortgage in 25 years. Now that's how long it takes to save up for a down payment after nine years of the NDP Liberals. It's a broken promise to Canadians. And... You know, the lists are, are too many. We've got the $9 million condo, the luxury suite they put the Prime Minister's media buddy in, Tom Clark. He's on billionaire's row. Well, Canadians are living under bridges in tents in record numbers. That's the legacy of these NDP Liberals, and it's shameful. Speaker, I, uh, I, I move, uh, seconded by the member for Cypress Hills Gla Grassland, that this motion be amended by deleting all the words after the word that and substituting the following. The 13th report of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, presented on Tuesday, May 17, 2022, be not now concurred in, but that it be recommitted to the committee for further consideration, including with respect to the implementation of requirements for financial institutions to disclose climate-related financial information, an invitation which the committee traced back to a 20 uh, an initiative which the committee traced back to a 2015 decision of G20 central bank governors provided that, for the purpose of this study, Mark Carney be ordered to appear as a witness for at least 
two hours at a date and time to be fixed by the chair of the committee, but within 21 days of the adoption of this order. This is incredibly important. We can look at the record of economic vandalism by, by these Liberals, and that's why I've moved uh, this motion today. Well done, Michael. Well done. The Honourable Member from Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Vito Lakes. The Liberals' $9 million cover up of their luxury condo purchase in New York City is now unraveling. Newly uncovered government documents show that the Prime Minister's media pal, Tom Clark, lied before a parliamentary committee. Wow. He had previously said that he didn't weigh in on the purchase, but now we know he, in fact, said that it required urgent replacement. After nine years of these NDP Liberals, they're not worth the cost, the corruption or lies from their insiders. So will the Prime Minister fire his buddy Tom Clark for lying to Canadians? Here, here, here. The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Mr. Speaker, I just went to the OGO Committee and I answered all his questions for an hour and we've been talking about this issue. First and foremost, we have good value for money in this transaction. Seven million dollars will be Funded. Second, we, all the process were, uh, of course, followed. And finally, we don't fall into the character assassination that he's doing about an important consul. But not only that, at the time of the U.S. election today, when all Canadians are looking down south to see what's going to happen, we need to invest in the american Indian relationship, and that's exactly what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable... The Honourable Member from Leeds Grenville, Thousand Islands and Vito Lakes. These economic vandals bought a $9 million condo in Manhattan for the Prime Minister's buddy, and they're subsidizing his rent to the tune of $40,000 per month after doubling rents for Canadians, doubling mortgages for Canadians, and presiding over a country for nine years with homeless encampments springing up under bridges in communities from coast to coast to coast. If that's not bad enough, Canadians are lined up at food banks in record numbers. 25% of Canadians don't where know where their next meal is coming from. If they won't fire Clark for lying, will they fire him for blowing $9 million? The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. Apparently, Mr. Clark was good enough for the Conservative when he was moderating their leadership race, but that's another issue. between Canada and the U.S., contrary to what the Conservatives want to do. And, of course, we won't take the recommendation of having an official residence outside of Manhattan. Why? Because only two countries in the world do so, Bangladesh and Afghanistan, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from... Order. The... That includes the Honourable Member from South Shore, St. Margaret's. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapore. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Speaker, Tom Clark lied to committee, saying that he didn't know about the purchase of a $9 million condo. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also said she didn't know about the purchase of a $9 million condo. She also said she didn't know that a Canadian warship was next to Russian warships in the port of Havana. She also said that she didn't know that a senior global affairs official attended a Russian embassy party. Mr. Wow. Speaker, isn't that the role of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to know? The Honourable Minister for Foreign Affairs. I know I have a lot of time for uh, the member opposite because she used to be the consul in Dallas and wow. she knows how much it's important to be investing in her diplomatic network in the U.S. So, of course, we'll continue to do so. We'll continue to invest across our continent, across also the U.S. because if there's one country in the world who knows about the Americans, who knows about the U.S., it's Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, <laughs> The Honourable Member from Richmond Centre. Mr. Speaker, previous Conservative government has